Hi, welcome to Threat Track Essentials. Um, here with Stan Nurlov, we're going to take a look at some of the stories we covered this week on Threat Track and uh, talk about what kinds of uh, cybersecurity lessons we can learn from all of them. How are you doing, Stan? I'm doing very well, Don. How are you? Great. Uh, you brought a really interesting story. It was kind of a follow-up to one we did a few months ago about a ransomware attack on a hospital, talking about what was really the true cost of the attack. Tell me about that. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're usually so enthralled about talking about, like, the malware or a specific campaign, uh, but it's really the cost uh, that's important at the end of the day. Um, and this one victim was able to enumerate the cost um, I thought it was interesting because they had two pieces to it. You know, the first was uh, the missed opportunity cost. So patients couldn't get care, couldn't pay for it. Also, they slowed down in their bill collections, so they couldn't um, bill people as they normally would. So it um, decreased maybe their reserves um, uh, or their operating expense, as well as some emergency spending to get the issue taken care of professional fees for external vendors, uh, maybe overtime or things of that nature to their own employees uh, who had to remedy the issue. Um, so I thought it was really interesting to cover that cost. And, um, you know, at least for me, it seemed like a pretty significant cost of $67 million. And that's a significant number. Absolutely. Now, uh, nobody wants to be hit with those kinds of problems or those kinds of costs. So what advice can we give people um, about not getting ransomware in the first place? I think most ransomware these days, it spreads through um, uh, like phishing email uh, and things like that. At least those are the campaigns we hear about it. But that's not all. Um, you know, some adversaries are actually using all the vulnerabilities of services that you have out there. Um, so you might have a router with a back door, or you might have like a Redis server out there uh, that is vulnerable to remote injection attack. So all of these things that are out there, those are all ways for ransomware to unfortunately spread into your network. And as we've seen throughout the entire year of 2020 and even before that, adversaries are really taking it seriously, trying to make money uh, with, with these scams, and they're getting deeper into the network. So if you've become a victim of one kind of crime, um, you might actually become a victim of ransomware. What's a good approach? I think, you know, we kind of mentioned it all of the time, um, defense in depth. So you have to layer your security so that you have a chance of detecting uh, the attacks and stopping them early. You obviously want to have protected solutions like network-based appliances, IDS systems, um, but more now, you want to make sure that on your clients, on your endpoints, you have some sort of a, a response solution, not just AV, but like a, an EDR. Um, so it's something that can detect a threat, let you forensically investigate it quickly without doing full forensics, and actually take action and remedy the problem. Um, a lot of the EDRs now, they can detect um, when something strange is happening, like a lot of files are being accessed all at once uh, suddenly where normally that wouldn't happen. Um, so uh, for ransomware, you know, at its final stage, something like an EDR solution is your best bet, but you really want to make sure that you're monitoring the totality of your um, assets, of your inventory, and you have different approaches to monitoring all of them. And that's really um, probably the, the very best thing to do. Now, when we're browsing the internet, a lot of our browsers have extensions uh, installed in them. Sometimes uh, we download them and install them ourselves to give them extra functionality. Uh, Manny brought us a story about how uh, extensions you have may not really be the extensions you think that you have, that they get sold off to other entities who may be using uh, the data, uh, your data that they collect from your browsing activities for other purposes. Tell me about that. Yeah, you know, I think what we're learning in this segment of Threat Track is um, there's a lot more uh, money involved in, um, you know, cyber operations. Uh, and uh, developers of widgets uh, or browser extensions, um, they, there's not a lot of money in it for them to make those extensions. And so there are these companies out there, one in particular that many mentioned, 
uh, that um, are trying to figure out how to monetize these widgets or these extensions that are out there. So, uh, so extensions, you know, you really, when you download them, they have a purpose and you have a little bit of trust in the developer or the extension has something that it does for you and, and you might have been using it comfortably for many years. But the developer of that extension, they might have moved on to a different project. You know, this is not like a money-making operation for them. So they have all their pursuits um, and along can come a company and kind of buy them out, but their business model might be different. In the case that Manu showed us, the business model was directing your browsing activity, uh, well, directing someone else's browsing activity through your browser. And that might not be something that you want to engage in. But that's just one of the things that can happen with the browser extensions, uh, with the browser extension. Because browser extensions, they actually have a lot of access into your browser. And these days especially, for most of us, the browser, you could say, is even more important than the operating system. In fact, um, things like Chrome, it's the browser kind of is the operating system, right, with the Chromebooks and things like that that kids use in school. So browsers are have become very important. That's how you interact with your computer. It's how you interact with the Internet. So you really have to be careful what kind of widgets or, or extensions you allow to be loaded into your environment. Um, and um, definitely have to pay attention to the motivations behind the uh, the extension. I think during the story we talked about, uh, you know, some good ways to recognize something that might be legitimate. Uh, for example, there might be extensions written by a company whose business model is, you know, something that you pay for, in which case the extension just supports the business model and is probably, you know, value add to you as a customer of that company, whereas some extensions that are free, that you might get what you didn't pay for. So we really need to be aware and careful about what extensions we install. Let's talk about Kim's story. She brought us a story about a patch that's available for a vulnerability in a firewall. Tell me about that. You know, I think this story is very important because it represents a class of problems that we've been seeing for many years of firewalls or security appliances or devices that we trust to provide security having a component that might be less than perfect or less than secure. Um, in this case, the web management uh, perspective. Now, uh, we've always said, you know, if you have a secure appliance, you want to make sure you separate uh, the administrative interface from the, uh, the main function of this appliance. So never have it be easily accessible to manage the firewall, you know, on the same network that it's protecting. Uh, so I think that's the lesson we kind of relearn here. Um, but unfortunately, you know, this firewall now joins the family of many firewalls and, and uh, products out there that um, have such a, a vulnerability and really underscores the, the, the fact that um, if you have a firewall or security appliance or secure access appliance like a VPN concentrator, don't let the management interface be exposed to the Internet. Really test that out and, and make sure that you understand how your equipment or your appliance is deployed. Well, thanks for all that great advice, Stan. Um, thank you all for watching. And if you want to keep up on great advice like this every week, please like and subscribe below. And if you want to take a deeper look into any of these stories, click on the playlist below. We'll see you next time.